All right. So it's been a while. I mean, for you guys out there in YouTube land, it really hasn't felt like that long because <laughs> videos come out every week. But for us, it's been a while. Chuck, you know, got to go to Greece, did some super secret CIA stuff in South Africa, different things like that. Um, and now we're back. And Always wanted to put Chuck on the spot. Decided to do a toasted flight. So we got three toasted <laughs> bourbons here. Chuck has no idea what they are. I'm going to uh, let him kind of enjoy it along the way. I'm, I'll am i probably introduce the bottles along the way, and you can try to figure out what they are because you've had none of these, so it really doesn't matter anyway. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so we're going to have some fun and just drink some toasted bourbons. Uh, these are all three bourbons. Uh, that you should be able to find. You might have to come to Kentucky because one or two might be Kentucky exclusive. One is pretty widely available uh, and some are expensive, some are cheap. So we'll see what we think. I'm pretty. Oh, looks like, like you've said, covered all the bases here. Price, yes. um, various distilleries, brands. Um, oh, yeah. Being in the toasted realm, I'm sure there's going to be a few different methods of uh, or what that actually means as far as toasting, whether it goes into a new bar or oak barrel. So, is it American oak? Is it to is it French oak? Is it, uh -huh. you know, who knows? Well, and also we've got one that is just a bourbon that's toasted. We got one or double oaked, uh, one that is a blend and toasted and one that is a blend and double oaked and toasted. So we got everything. And just quickly this. explain the double oaked and toasted for. So double oak just means that it was put in a barrel and then put in another barrel. Which is, is would oaked. be the standard bourbon, which is a toast plus a char. Right. Yeah. And then toasted uh, would just be a uh, lightly toasted, generally using infrared for the barrel. Uh, generally speaking, it is also a double oak product because you're going to let it's age in an old barrel and then move it to the toasted barrel though a lot of young distilleries now uh will go to a toasted barrel because you can get a lot of those better flavors quicker and so then you can put out a younger bourbon and still get a quality-ish bourbon uh i don't think it is as good as those eight year to ten year products but it's better than a straight charred uh, barrel. Yeah. And the reason for that is how a charred barrel works, which is any way that any charcoal filtering system works. So it's using the charcoal of the barrel to filter out parts of the bourbon uh, when it goes into the wood and out of the wood. And that's why when they say alligator char, a lot of the distillers and master distillers believe eight years is kind of that perfect uh, age uh, because that is where it's fully filtered in and out. Um, so you need more time with a higher charred barrel uh, with toasted, not as much because it can get into that wood a lot quicker. All right. So number one here. Yep. Delicious. It, the nose was, was very nice. Yeah. First impression was good. I got a little bit of a, not, not a classic toast, like just toast, but a bit more of the char to me. Like it's a, a bit more of a charcoal, not a smoky finish, but I like it like a charcoal. Yeah, I also but there's get something some, sweet as yeah, well. I was gonna so say I get like chocolatey notes, maybe sweet chocolatey. I can go with that. Almost some honey chocolate. And there's definitely oak in there. Well, there there's the classic toasted notes on the on the palate. Mm -hmm. Definitely get some of that. Nutmeg, cardamom, spice from a toasted American oak. Yep. A, like a good amount of it. Like it's it's there and robust, but not overpowering. Yeah. Definitely get a lot of the oak notes. That's coming through. And the sweetness, of course, which you're going to generally get a sweeter product with uh, toasted and double oaked products. Yeah, good texture, good finish, lasting. The finish is still mostly that, say that toasted oak. You get a little bit of like it, the toasted oak hits you in the palate. Then you get a little bit of just like a, a pepper for a few seconds. And then and then that 
what's lingering in your mouth is like the as the liquid dissipates is is more of that drying toasted oak yeah yeah definitely and it's a nice creamy viscous mouthfeel on it uh but it's a solid bourbon so on this one i get marshmallow i almost got lemon pound cake oh i can see that i was getting citrus it's a little bit less citrus as you but there's that definitely like, that creamy vanilla yeah note. that's the it's the it's almost the a, just a hint of citrus but it's like the the outer the sugary coating the glaze yeah. of the of the pound cake yeah and i would say it's it's a like a yeah pound cake birthday cake type note not an angel food note it's not that sweet a little bit a little bit of oak or grain in the back too Maybe a little brown sugar and it's super sweet <laughs> that's sweet yeah Wow. Maybe a little bit of nuttiness at the back. Yeah, I can see that. I would guess this isn't age wise would be on the younger side. Getting a little just like a, a it's like a slight grain note. It's not that so I'm just using that as my my yeah. indicator. You can taste the corn. That's what yeah. High corn, yeah. high corn in the mashville, probably low, you know, low rye. Mm-hmm. but not as viscous or creamy as the first one definitely no, not as thinner. complex either yeah. yeah this one would would have snaked past me i guess like i don't get a lot of like guesses this is the double oaked only one but i don't get a lot of toasted notes reminds me a little bit of a nulu but it's not a Nulu. I can tell you that much. I wouldn't throw a Nulu in here. Uh, but it's, just, it's a younger bourbon. Definitely more wood forward. Uh, not quite as bad as the Nulu's where I feel like I'm chewing on a uh, stave of wood or something. But definitely less complex, which is interesting. Because this was one of those that People were very excited and sought after. Certain mm. YouTubers were saying this is the next best thing. So in a blind, it's very interesting because I'm. It, it, I don't think it's anywhere close to the first. No, I I 100% agree. I would like a little conf- controversy on the channel because it's good for content. But yeah, I'm completely in agreement. Number one, the nose was better. The, the palate was better. Um, it is a bit more of that classic toasted American oak, but number two to me is like, I don't know that that toasting or double oak did, you know, we, we, we didn't taste the distillate before it went into that second barrel, right. but, um, I, I don't think it added much to this, to be, to be honest. And, and maybe some of that's like what we preach is that it's good distillate going into the barrel gives you good distillate coming out on these finished products. And, and I'm not sure this this whiskey that went into that barrel would have been my preference anyway. Just that higher yeah. corn. Okay. You on to three? Yep. Mm. It's a well-rounded nose. Um, it's yeah. a little bit less like in your face than the than the first one. Like a little bit lower. Yeah, a little bit less robust, yeah. I guess. A little bit weaker notes. A really nice like caramel vanilla. Yeah, I even get some like red cherry notes back there. Yeah, that's a good just like if this were a Kentucky bourbon, I'd just mm-hmm. yeah, just now it's just let me sniff it. Here. And it's one of those that's nice. It's not right in your face like you were saying, so you have to kind of like go in and really kind of pull those flavors out and analyze it to really get some good notes. That's good. Yeah, I will say, like across the board. Very well balanced, got a lot of fun rides, and we'll talk about all that. But first sip, the predominant note I get is right at the beginning of the finish. I do get a little bit of young wood notes that just like really pop in. What's interesting, I didn't get those until almost the very end of when the like my the finish is fading, and then it was like that's it it gave me that little bit of a, a young wood note. Cause initially I was just getting it's like a medicinal maybe a little bit of a medicinal cherry note sweet yeah with that yeah, caramel 
Mm -hmm. Caramel, vanilla, medicinal cherry. Uh, no young grain notes whatsoever. I don't get any of that. And then, yeah, get start getting a little bit of wood notes on the finish. But then it quickly, for me, it quickly goes away. And then I go back to like a good spicy, peppery finish that coats the jawline and everything. Yeah, this is just really well balanced from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Finishes last. Like, I just think it has something for you at every, at, at every turn. Yes. I don't think it would... It, it wouldn't if we were to rate this on our you know our one to five scale that we do. Um, I don't think it would be at the tops of either of those in any category. But the consistency is really good. Yes, yeah, and I feel like this one is very approachable for most people uh, because it is. I, I, I think it's a lower proof. Uh, hint, hint. That would have been my <laughs> guess as well. That would. <laughs> Some uh, of the, some of why it just, it's just like, I don't like to use the word smooth because what does smooth mean? But it's smooth. Right. Yeah. There's no ethanol notes. Uh, the nose is delicate. It's just very approachable, very drinkable. I think this would be one that uh, you could put in a cocktail and be happy with it. You could drink it neat and be happy with it. You could invite price, people over to your bar and, uh, let people try it and they would enjoy it. And this would be a good kind of introduction, I feel like, into a toasted product or a double oaked product, depending on your interpretation. Yeah, I don't, again, like I, I think I lack, other than maybe at the very end of that finish, and you got to look for it, I lack what I think of as the classic toasted notes, mm -hmm. or at least what other we say classic toasted notes. This is like, you know, what's a rye? Is is rye to you 95.5 MGP or is rye 51 rye? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kentucky rye. Um, so what what is toasted to you? To me, I'm not getting those fresh toasted notes on this this third one, but that's okay, right? I think the right. bourbon is very well done. I, it'd be interesting to taste the distillate that went into prior just to see how it changed, but um, yeah. Yeah, well done. This mm -hmm. is that's pretty good. So uh, of the three, I don't know if we're if you yeah, want we me can to rank, rank my I, preference. Um, I'm going three, one, two. I would be the exact same. So we'll go last place to first place. So last place is the hardest bottle to find, and it's the one people have been going crazy for, and that is Blackwood, uh, toasted bourbon. So this is a small company that just kind of started doing their stuff. Uh, it's basically some guys that owned a derby horse and a couple things like that. And so they decided, hey, let's do some bourbon. So they released to Kentucky, uh, maybe Indiana, uh, and that's it. It's they are on their third batch. This was batch one that everyone was going crazy for saying it's the new best toasted bourbon there is. Uh, it is done in partnership with the Justin's House of Bourbon. So if you ever want to find it, you can find it at Total Wine here in Kentucky pretty regularly because nobody's picking it up anymore. Um, and you can find a toasted rye and you can also find it at the Justin's House of Bourbons. I very much enjoyed it when I first opened it, uh, and I enjoy it on its own, but compared to these other two in the lineup, which is why we do blind lineups, it, I don't think, compares. So Yeah, like, going back to it, like, I get another, like, on the nose is kind of interesting. You know, we were getting the lemon pound cake mm -hmm. glaze. Um, initially, I was getting a bubblegum note when I went back the second time. I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's fine. Is it over a good. hundred dollars? Good. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no, that's, that's the other thing. I, I think mean, it's you, you want me MSRP's to pour my vantage because if we're right. talking about best toast, oh, yeah. So. yeah, vantage would yeah beat all this out. We, I mean, we both have a bottle of vantage, so we should uh, maybe bonus yeah, content. We'll see. Yeah, bonus content for Patreon. So yeah, so that's that one. Uh, number two for us is actually kind of surprising. Is Peerless Double Oat? So Dude, Peerless has been. Knocking it out of the park. Yeah. So TJ sent I, us a single barrel that is probably going to be bourbon of the year, I think. Yeah. I know. I can't keep drinking it because it's that good. But uh, so again, so there are some very big caveats with the Peerless Double Up. First off, uh, 
any Peerless product, if you go to the distillery, it's going to be very expensive to get there. Uh, luckily, you can usually find it on sale other places around Kentucky uh, and give it a little bit of time. And usually prices drop at other stores just because people don't know about Peerless as much and don't uh, chase it. The other thing with the double oak products, uh, how they do double oaking is basically if there's a barrel that is leaking, they pull it and then they rebarrel it. That is why they started doing double oaking is they didn't want to lose product. So essentially, they're all kind of single barrels in a way, if you think about it, because they're not going to blend these out and make a huge thing. So you could have some really good ones. You could have some really bad ones. Uh, but I think consistently, we've found even single barrel picks, you're talking maybe a 10 to 20% variation. So this is good. So I mean, pretty much it's going to be good. Some are going to be really, really good. And some are just going to be okay. So yeah, that geez, that was the how many years ago did we you and I visit and tour um peerless, but that was the one product I bought uh, when I left was a was a peerless double oak. So it <laughs> that that grabbed my heart several years ago. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't have been a peerless. Oh yeah, it was when they was. just did the three seven five. They were in the yep, three seven fives. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That yeah, that was good back then too. So so yeah, so yep. this is their official launch of the product and doing that. Which leads us to number one, which I always love when these guys come out yep. as Th the Third best. sample. Yes. Number one in the Third ranking. Third sample is number one, which is Man, that's so good. That's Pursuit so cool. United Toasted. Are you serious? Yes. So this is... Pursuit United, Damn, Kenny and Ryan <laughs> toasted from Kenny and Ryan at Bourbon Pursuit. Uh, this is batch 11 CC, which was their first release. It is the bourbon. They have a rye, which the only difference is the uh, brown is now green. Uh, and it is about 50, 60 bucks a bottle. It sits on shelves because people, again, don't know much about these guys, but they are doing amazing stuff. All their bourbon and rye is absolutely amazing. Uh, supposedly, the toasted rye is even better than the toasted bourbon, and the toasted bourbon is great. I love it. Uh, as you can see, I drink it regularly. Um, so I was pretty excited that did so well, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, start to finish, it was a it was a hitter. I do like this. I, I like your description of this. Can be your pour that you invite people over to. It could be an entry point for somebody if you wanted to share a like this is a your first toasted toasted bottle um and at that price point it can be a mixer so mm -hmm. it's a really versatile bottle and should probably be on my shelf it's hard to find three bourbons that i haven't tasted so um i know bravo yep all right so with that um uh, let us know below do you like toast bourbon if, if you don't like i don't understand because toasting is all the craze right now and everything like that but have you tried these three uh what do you think and have we influenced you are you gonna maybe pick one up so let us know and we'll see you next time cheers stay neat